guys, welcome back to the channel. I hope you're doing really, really well. And this is an AFCON quarterfinal review. And this AFCON is officially the best AFCON I watched. What an AFCON! Oh my god, one AFCON. We had two absolutely insane matches where we had Mali take on Côte d'Ivoire and we had Cape Verde take on South Africa. And the drama in both games was actually insane. Insane! There was, I have never seen anything like this. I haven't. It ended, of course, uh, Mali 1, Ivory Coast 2, and uh, Cape Verde 0, South Africa 0. Cape Verde lost on penalties. We'll talk about both of them. But before we do that, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. And let's get into it. So Mali versus uh, Ivory Coast. Oh my god, how did Ivory Coast pull this one off? Ivory Coast beat Senegal. They were almost out against Senegal. They were out almost in a group stage. If Morocco did not be Zambia, Ivory Coast would have been out of this competition. And now they are on the they are on the verge. Semi-finals, finals, two games. And they got the whole competition. It's insane, insane. But Mali, I thought that and we'll talk about the game first of all. Mali started well. I thought Mali started with a really, really good energy. They started pressing. They put Kudito under all sorts of pressure in the first couple of minutes. And I don't think uh, Ivory Coast had much of a clue how to deal with it. I thought Fai, the coach, he really, really struggled with this game in the first 30, 35 minutes. They were not in the game one little bit in that first 35 minutes at uh, Ivory Coast. Uh, Mali started really, really well. And Mali just missed the trick. They had to take the chances. They had to. Uh, anyway, Kusunu gives away a penalty. Uh, but the first one, which is not a given because he was the player who was involved in the sequence, was offside. And then the second one is given, and it's again just clumsy, very clumsy defending from Kasunu. No need for that sort of challenge. He tangles the uh, Malian player, and it is Adam Aturare who takes it, who misses it, and just like that, Ivory Coast survive once again. Yaya Fafana made a very, very decent save, and I thought Yaya Fafana at time made a very good save, to be honest, in this game. And after this, I thought Mali's intensity did calm down a lot more. Before that penalty though, Mali were absolutely all over Ivory Coast. But even after that, I thought Ivory Coast were really, really struggling with progressing the game. They were progressing the game. And they were struggling to get into Mali's half. I thought uh, Seko Fafana, I think, had a decent chance, but that was a bad tip. But overall, it was a really, really struggling first 30, 30, 35 minutes for Ivory Coast. And then eventually, eventually, this is the first build drama that we're going to talk about. Kusunu gets sent off. Seri gives the ball away. Kusunu gets a tackle in, second yellow, just insane, insane, sent off, and Ivory Coast are now down to 10. Ah, this, this was going to be a long day in the office, I thought, for Ivory Coast at this point. Like, surely, they're done, because in African football, if you go down to 10, you're most, li most likely, in most scenarios, you're losing that game. But Ivory Coast, they defended superbly in the second half. I thought the substitution that Fai made was smart, he brought in Halle. Because Kayumi was useless in that first half for them. Uh, he took off Grudel. I thought I would have done it for Pepe. Uh, but he did take off Grudel later on, I think, for Dringa. And Willy Bolly came on for his experience. Second half, I thought second half Mali did not create much. I thought Mali actually played better in 11v11 than 10v11. Maybe they were just struggling as a low block, who knows. But I don't think Mali played well. They were shooting from outside the box most of the time. And actually, one of them did go in, so fair play. It was a great shot, to be fair. From, I think, Niam. Uh, outside the box. Shoots. And it's an absolutely outstanding, outstanding goal from uh, Mali. And 1-0 up with 19 minutes to go against 10 men. I don't know how. How Mali have bottled this. Mali, we all know, had this tag of chokers. And they choked really, really hard this time around. The game management was pathetic. Pathetic. They gave Ivory Coast the ball. They started to sit deep. And Ivory Coast grew in confidence and they felt like they could do it and they did. Uh, I think there was a one chance from the set piece. I think there was two actually, yeah. There was definitely one I can remember where he almost beats the goalkeeper but misses the post. And just like that in the last minute, finally, they find both energy. Halle wins the first ball, goes into Diakite. Diakite plays in Fafana. Fafana shoots, uh, deflects off the defender. Goalkeeper is also committed. And it is, of course, Simon Adringa, the star boy. He scores 1-0 to Ivory Coast. And from here, I'm thinking, oh dear me. How Mali just bottled this. And in extra time, 
I don't know what Mali's approach was in the extra time. I still feel they were shell shocked. They did not have a clue what to do in the extra time period. They should they stick? Should they twist? Should they go for it? Should they not? And they decided not to go for it, and it cost them. Even I think in the penalty shootout, they would have, they probably would have lost. I'm, I'm not. I mean, penalties is a lottery, but I'm watching this Mali team. I was quite confident, and the way Mali played in the extra time period, they did not try and score. It was more like Kudu actually wanted to win the game in normal time, deservedly so when in won in the end anyway. Uh, Hale hit the po- uh, crossbar. They were pressing, and he felt like it was actually Kudu who had eleven, and Mali who had ten. Just insane stuff. And in the last moment of the game, almost the last seconds, uh, a shot which dif- in which I think Diakite puts it in. And Diakite, just like Winston Abubakar at the World Cup, gets sent off after the shirt celebration. So him and Kusunu are both, I think, out, out of this competition, I guess. Because Kusunu, two yellows, so that means he's out for two games. And he only got two games left, right? And Diakite, straight red, so he was out for three. So... I think this will probably affect their games and the qualifiers as well in the future. But anyway, not to be for uh, Mali. Mali game management, they had the game in their own hands. They had it in their own hands. And I think this is the one time Mali will regret it for a very long time. This is the game they should have won. They must have. And you could see how the coach felt. Uh, the way it just collapsed. I was sad and I've seen stuff regarding Mali fans suiciding and all that. It's just really, really sad to see. But... It's a heartbreaking way to lose, even if I think they didn't deserve to win today with the way they managed that game. But it's just really, really sad to see. Mali, I think, have bottled their best chance to win an AFCON. They have. I really, really felt this was Mali's best chance to win an AFCON. Especially how they played in our first 40 minutes. They had Ivory Coast. They had them. They had them. And they messed it up. And that's the mentality kicking in. Ivory Coast, though. Emrys Fai. What is this guy doing? Is working. I don't think he's doing anything that brilliantly tactically. It's just telling the players to go out and express themselves and it's working. And they're doing really, really well and they're in the semi-final. Insane stuff, but I think Emery's fine. We're looking at a future Ivory Coast manager here. I think if this guy gets them to win that, of course, there's absolutely no way Ivory Coast say to, sorry sir, we don't need you anymore. He will be the next Ivory Coast manager if, if Ivory Coast do win this tournament. I am 90, 99% sure. So Emirates fight is actually fighting for opportunity to win the AFCON to keep his dream job, which is of course Ivory Coast national team job. But Ivory Coast, the fighting spirit they got is insane. Probably one of the best I've seen in a long time. Long time. This team does not know when it's dead. It does not know. And I'm really excited for that game against Congo. Where I think it's going to be a really, really exciting game. Uh, if I talk about the other game, Ronan Williams, you are a outstanding goalkeeper. You're just a... He just is. I don't know, what is he doing um, with the Sundowns? He's a brilliant, I mean, Sundowns are a very, very good team in African football. But this guy needs to be in Europe. And he's only, he's 32 to be fair now, so maybe a bit too late. But he is outstanding. Some of the saves they made in the game, the one where I think uh, Rodriguez got in behind and Rodriguez shoot, I thought he made a fantastic save. There were some other good saves that I thought he made. And, t- and Kate Word. Kate Word did not practice their penalties. I'm sure... Some of the penalties they took were just not great. But you had to give the goalkeeper a lot of credit. But I thought the football that Cape Verde played was outstanding. They played mo- modern brand of football at international level. And all the players knew what to do. They were so comfortable. They moved the ball about. They were fizzing about like it's nothing. It was easy days. And they came out with energy. I thought South Africa took a long while to get going. I thought the first 15 minutes Cape Verde really, really started well. And Bafana, Bafana had a slow start. But as the half went on, I thought Bafana got into the game. But second half, again, Cape Verde started well. South Africa set in. And then South Africa later on started to get into the game a bit more. They had some, both teams had chances to win this game in normal time. Both teams, I think, had chances to win this in extra time. I don't know how this game's ended. No, no. Both teams will need to address this striker situation because, phew, insane. Uh, anyway, Cape Verde. First of all, talking about Cape Verde. The, amount, the great football they played. It's just sad they're not going to make the final. But I think... Hands down, they're probably one of the best. My favourite teams of this tournament, k word The football they play, the way they move the ball about, just absolutely f- brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. They're so well coached. They're so well drilled. It's great to see. South Africa as well, similar case. I think Hugo Bruce, he's got this team very, very organised. Very difficult to score goals against. South Africa have not conceded a goal since match day one. That is insane. Insane. 
And I think South Africa also uh, were the better team. I thought they were much more professional than Cape Verde. They were getting their work done. And eventually in the shootout. Let's move to the shootout. Oh my god. Ronan Williams pulled a four saves out of five. I, I can't believe this. Four saves in a penalty shootout. In a crunch quarterfinal game. Is insane. Is insane. Uh, Rosinho also the Cape Verde goalkeeper. I thought he made some good saves as well throughout the game. To be honest. Rosinho. He had some very good saves in him. I thought uh, he looked shaky at times when the crosses were coming in. I thought he did well. And he saved a penalty in the shootout. And... Normally, South Africa scored, what, two out of their four? If Cape Verde just took their penalties properly, who knows? Who knows? But anyway, in the shootout, Cape Verde missed their first. South Africa put, put away their first. Uh, Cape Verde missed their second. South Africa missed their second. Poor penalty with the quick run-up, hit the post. A crossbar, sorry. Third one, Cape Verde missed again. S they all put in the same place and Williams just saved it with ease. And then, of course, South Africa missed theirs as well. Rosinho fooled off a save. Uh, then, Cape Verde scored, 1-1, hope, and then South Africa scored theirs, just like that, it's 2-1 to South Africa going into the crunch penalties, and Ronan Williams has single-handedly almost got Spafana Pafana to the, to the semi-finals, outstanding stuff, I give South Africa a lot of credit, very well organised defensively, Percy Tau was all over the park, he was brilliant, and I think I would have felt sad for whoever got knocked out in this case, it's Cape Verde, but I feel delighted for the winner because the winner were fantastic. They were fantastic. South Africa were equally very, very good. And I think South Africa was in Nigeria. That's going to be a very interesting tie. And you got, of course, Kudu Tuatika on DR Congo. Fantastic stuff. And I think it's probably based on the football. Actually, Ivory Coast, not really. But based, I think, based on overall tournament, right? Nigeria. South Africa. DR Congo, I think are the top three teams. And there's AFCON. They deserve to be in a semi-final. They have been very, very good. And they deserve to be in it. And I'm really excited to see how the semi-finals play out. Because I'm sure this AFCON has got so much more to deliver. we just only got three games now. I mean, we've got technically four, the third place game as well. But uh, we've got so much excitement coming now. I feel the semi-finals, we've got more excitement. And I'll be back to preview that when the time is there. And now... Um, finally, it is crunch time, people. It is crunch time. And I hope the best team wins this Africa Cup of Nations. I'm sure all four of the teams that's qualified to the next round will be feeling like they got a good chance now. It's 25%. It's two games you have to perform in. And it's going to be interesting to see who holds their nerve now. It's going to be immense pressure. I'm excited. I'm sure you guys are. And if you like the video though, please do like and share the video. If you like the video in general, please subscribe. Leave me your opinions about anything in the comments. Leave me your opinions about this insane set of matches that we had today. I haven't seen anything like this. Anything like this ever. And I hope you guys like another video.